Welcome to Kempo University. My name is Alan Babinick and I'm your instructor. I did a video the other day on timing stances and I had a bunch of people asking me for some more examples of them. So I'm going to give you some different examples from the different belt levels as we go through. Now, the one thing that you want to remember, you might do techniques a little bit different than we do. No big deal. The stances that I showed you are pretty much in all the techniques, just how you do them might be a little, little bit different. But no worries, this is just an example of what a timing stance is, not how to do the techniques. So in the yellow belt, we have checking the storm against an overhead club. There's a transitional cat in there, and really what it's doing, you don't stop in the cat. When the guy's swinging the club at you, the whole idea is step kick and get into the guy, okay? Whether you're gonna do another front kick like the manual says, or if you're gonna do a side kick like we do, doesn't make a difference. The idea is step off to the side and kick as fast as you can, all right? So when we're doing checking the storm, I wanna step off to the side. The cat just tells me when my foot's in the cat stance, my hands should be up over here so I could block any second swing coming towards me, and then I get my kick, and I'll do my twist and get my hand ready for the back knuckle. I know we do it a little bit different from the manual, but that's how we do it, okay? Uh, you have to see other videos for explanations on that one. But even if you're doing the front kick, front kick version, you do not stop in the cat. You're just gonna go through it because you wanna kick him as fast as you possibly can. If you stop in the cat, you give him a chance, so don't do that. Here's a few examples from Orange Belt. We have lone kimono and clutching feathers. It's really the same kind of technique. It's a pin step cock technique as we go through. So when I'm doing this, I'll do it sideways, is that if I was doing lone kimono, when I pin step cock and I hit my high close kneel, and then I unwind to the neutral bow as I'm doing the upward forearm strike, you don't stop in the close kneel. It's just a timing stance to say, when you're here, this hand should be up, this hand should be, your elbow should be locked down, your hand is on your hip. So as soon as I hit that, as soon as I hit that stance, I don't stop in it, I just unwind and hit the guy, okay? So lone kimono, and clutching feathers, pretty much the same technique, has the same idea. So clutching feathers, when the guys grab my hair, it's gonna be a pin step cock and I go back again into the, the uh, high close kneel and my left hand's pinning down, it's pinning down on the top of my head. I drop back to a high close kneel, my right hand is chambered high in the middle knuckle and then I unwind as I strike two the uh, nerve in the armpit, right? We know the technique, I hope. But when we're doing this, there's no stop in the high close kneels. Don't stop there. It's yank him back, pop. And you hit the guy as fast as you can. One of the other stances in orange, uh, timing stance, is in crashing wings. So when I do crashing wings, somebody comes up behind me, They're, they got me in a low, has to be low, bear hug, and I shoot my hands up and I shoot them down and then I come to this cat. If the guy's hands are around me, do you think I really wanna stand in a cat stance where he could pull me off balance and knock me all over the place, right? Throw me to the ground, do whatever, pick me up. So that cat stance is transitional and you only go as far as you need to get around the leg. And it says when I'm in the stance, I should have his wrist. Okay, so my right hand is grabbing his wrist, my left hand's on top. When I'm in a cat stance, my hands should be here. So that's the timing that it tells us about, okay? And so when we're doing crashing wings, the guy's behind me, he's grabbing me low in a bear hug. I shoot up, I shoot down, I cat up and back. I didn't stop in the uh, cat stance. Technically, I don't stop in the reverse bow either, okay? As soon as I hit, as soon as I cat around, I hit this stance, I wanna come around and do the elbow hammer. Actually, it's a tricep hammer, but you get the idea. 
So I don't want to stay in the reverse bow either. I want to try to turn around and hit the guy as fast as I can. So, but the timing of the cat tells us, hey, your hands should be here when you're doing this technique. Now in purple belt, one of the techniques is leaping crane that has a timing stance in it, all right? So I do my parry and I jump to the side and I say, oh, look, when this is done, this is chambered, I should be in a crane, okay? If you notice, I'm not balancing it. I'm not gonna stand like this all day and go, oh, let me kick and then back knuckle. No, it's not what we do, right? So as we're doing this technique, the crane stance just tells me my hands should be done moving. I should be done with my parry. I should have my hand in position to do the uh, back knuckle by the time I'm doing the kick. So leaping crane is step and I'm hitting the guy as I lean into it, okay? So that's the timing. The leaping crane or the crane stance is the timing stance in leaping crane to let you know where your hands should be. Now in blue belt, we have hugging pendulum that I'm gonna to use today. Uh, and because the nickname, the very long nickname for hugging pendulum is a one-handed sideways leaping crane. If you look at the technique long enough, you'll figure out why. But as we go through, I shuffle back, block down. My left hand's high, checking against any kind of punch that's coming in. I'm gonna take my hands out of it. What I'm really doing is just a cr front crossover side kick. I just cross, kick, and put my foot down back to my neutral, okay? So that's taking the hands out of it. The timing stance, now this one we are hitting, but we're not stopping, is the front crossover, all right? So when we're doing this technique, I shuffle back, block down, got that, yay, okay? The front crossover tells me when my foot hits the ground, my right hand should already be on my shoulder, okay? And I should be grabbing them. So from here, I shuffle back, block down. This hand stays out. I just grab their shoulder, got it. So when I'm in my front crossover, this hand is chambered for the back knuckle by the time I'm going in. So you do not want to stop in the front crossover because you'll kill all the backup mass involved in that side kick to take the guy down. So again, you don't stop in that stance, you just go through it and you just gotta speed your hands up to match what your feet are doing. Okay, but that's why it's a timing stance. In green, we have a timing stance example in capturing the storm and conquering shield. All right, so I'm gonna do capturing the storm first. I actually did a video, if you're interested, it's called, what's it called? Capturing the storm a little bit different and it goes over what my hands are doing on the grab. So if you wanna go back and look at that one if you're interested in capturing the storm. But today I'm just talking about the uh, timing stance. So in capturing the storm, what we're doing, even if you do it a little different with the hands, it doesn't make a difference. So what we're doing, I'm standing like this. I'm stepping forward, I'm doing my X, grab, break the arm, bash him in the knee, I step forward, I punch out. When I'm in my neutral bow, I pulled the club out of his hand and then I'm hitting down, all right? So when we go forward, there is no stop as I punch up. So from here, really what I'm doing, if I just did the stances, I'm stepping forward, turning, leaning into the guy, I just step and I'm done, okay? There is no neutral bow with the hand punching up as you go through. That's just the time when, you, when your foot hits this neutral bow, you should be pulling the club out of the guy's hand. All right, and again, if you do it a little different, you're not sure, go check out that other video. Now in conquering shield, the guy's doing a stiff arm grab, okay? So his arms, well, for your point of view, his arms this way, all right? When we're doing this technique, as you pivot to a small cat stance, so I'm facing you, I pivot, this points my knee at the target of his knee, because it's a right, it's a cross leg check, front kick to the knee. So when I do the first bit and I pin his hand and I break his elbow, 
I'm right here. And you see, I went to the cat stance and then boom, kick and drop, bring this up, drop down. Hopefully you know the technique, right? So you don't stop in that little cat. You just turn, it just tells you my hands, I should already be pinned and I should already be hitting the guy's elbow when I'm kicking and dropping down for all that striking, okay? And I wanna make sure I got the guy pin anchor just like we did way back in like lone kimono, okay? That's where we learned how to do that. So this little stance just tells me my hands should be here by the time I'm in the stance and then I kick, but you don't stop in it, you just pivot and kick, okay? But if you practice it that way, it really helps you get the timing of the technique. All right, a timing stance in brown. I'm gonna do entwined lance, okay? <laughs> Just to be honest, not one of my favorite techniques. I think you'd get hurt doing this one. Uh, I think I said why in some different videos on Kempo University. But when you're doing this, you are trying to lose half a stance and off angle when he throws, or not when he throws, if he throws the knife, you're in trouble. <laughs> when he tries to stab you in the face with his knife, all right? I'm in my left neutral. My hands are low to bait the guy into stabbing high, all right? So from here, easiest way I've learned how to do the technique is, because you want to do the ridge hand so you're not exposing your wrist to the knife, is as you do the left front twist, this does the outward hooking parry, and both hands are up like this. It's like, hello, I have a, I'm holding a tray, okay? But then it's grab, step, chop, and you're chopping the guy in the throat, and you're holding that knife away from you, all right? So really what we're trying to do is just step forward and chop the guy. I'm gonna do it sideways so you can see it a little bit. So from here, as I move in, that's what I'm trying to do, okay? I do not stop in the twist stance. All I'm doing is saying, okay, when I'm in the twist stance, my hands should be here and maybe even grabbing already before I step in to do the chop for entwined lance. So the twist stance is just a timing stance to tell you where your hands need to be when you're doing the technique. If you stopped, you'll probably get cut or worse. All right, for brown, I'm actually gonna do the first move of one of the gun techniques, defying the rod, okay? Which really, if you take a look at defying the storm, defying the rod, they're kind of the same. You have to do a little bit something different because it's a gun. But uh, let's look at our timing stances in there. The gun is pointed somewhere up in here. I prefer to do this technique if the gun's pointed over here a little bit more, but it could be center. You don't wanna do it if it's pointed on this side, okay? So from here, as I do the first move, this first move actually looks like what I did in Conquering Shield, okay? So if you remember Conquering Shield, it's pivot, and then I can shoot my kick off. I'm trying not to use my hands. So I pivot and shoot my kick off, but now we're doing a lot more stuff, okay? So with the gun technique, I'm gonna say the gun's pointed over here a little bit. Makes my life easier, okay? My hands are coming up, I'm like, hey, 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 I don't want to fight your <laughs> and down as we go through. So the timing stance was this kick drop as I go through. So you, do, you don't want to just go Whoo, like that and move your body, <laughs> move your body, but just let, let them have the gun out there, right? So that rotating twist, just like Conquering Shield, is a timing stance. And you could call it a rotating twist. You could say, oh, I'm going to a little cat stance. Whatever you want to call it, it's fine with me. But you're hitting that stance and it tells you your hands should be here when you hit that stance. So that's just one or two from each belt level. There's a lot more all over the place, especially at the higher ranks, when you're doing more things with your hands and your feet. So I hope that helped and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching this video production from Kempo University.